The love helped me take that freaking gun out of my mouth. You had those moments? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Just like everybody. Listen, in every Marine Corps unit I experience, there's always one pretty boy. <laughs> there's always one guy who's absolutely jacked. But you know what? They were certified Billy Badass, and that is today's Rudy Reyes. And guys, I, uh, I'm excited to meet him for the very first time because I saw him on this series, HBO Generation Kill, which was my generation, and just an honor to meet you, not just on the screen, but Thank now in person. And I think I say that for a lot of us in the veteran community. Thank you, I take it very seriously, and it's a humble honor for myself. This is a hallowed culture for all of us. So, and it, we were blessed, first of all, to serve and to fight in a time yeah. of war after the war on terror began, and that we survived, and that we're making good with our lives now as leaders, as, as warriors, entrepreneurs, as thinkers. And we're writing a new chapter now. It's not just locate, close with, and destroy the enemy by fire maneuver. It's locate, close with, and destroy your fears and limitations mm. by fire maneuver. In close combat, That's man. right. Yes. Repel the enemies. It's all with fire in close combat. And that's yeah. what we're doing now. Yeah. Our uniform's different. Yep. Uh, our, we're not running 782 gear. And now we're learning that the pen, or let us say the keyboard, is uh, our weapon of choice. Sure. Uh, but still, we're manicured with the correct equipment and gear for the mission. And right now, we have to be uh, got, we have to be on top of media. Sure. And we have to show the world what kind of men we are and women we are and garner bankability from clients, from sponsors, what have you, so that the trust, the same trust our country gave us yes. to go freaking fight and, and, and defeat our enemies, now we must gain that trust in the business world and in the financial world. And we will do it, and we are doing it. Amen, brother. You know, you, you shared a lot of your story because a lot of people see Hollywood, the, the act, the, your workouts on Instagram and all that sure. stuff, but a lot of people don't know about that story of you growing up. That, that, that was, that was moving yeah. to me. Uh, Emancipated at 17 years old. So you, you yes. went out and got legal adulthood shit, basically. Yes. To make decisions for your two younger brothers. Yes, I love them. Just wow. like you guys would do the same for your Marines. You know, yeah. Marines. Yeah. Do whatever it takes uh, to mentor them and to develop them. Yeah. Because the, because you know that they yeah. will be in the breach as well. Yeah. And at any time, you could be struck down. Yeah. And the mission continues. Yeah. The mission continues. And how do we do that? We take such uh, extreme passionate ownership yeah. of everything that is in our charge from the base and boot camp, and it continues on yeah. so that we empower our subordinates to be the best at the level that they're at and also to take our jobs because that is how the mission will continue because it's a very real possibility in combat and in warfare. Not everybody comes home. But gosh, man, what a brotherhood of love! Although it's tough love, and you have to be strong, and you have to be the best, you have to be loyal, but what love? And I think also, that love is also uh, what hurts us sometimes, or the lack thereof when we come home, because we don't have that barracks community. Yeah, right. We don't have that squad and team community, and we are so blessed to have so much support we could absolutely freaking accomplish any mission ever given to us. We can, uh, we can chop off freaking mountains with the edge of our hands because mm -hmm. we have the love, we have the trust. So now we're building that now in this civilian community and our yeah. citizen community. You know, one of the things that I got from your story too is you lived a little bit of life. You know, 17, yes. raising your brothers. And then you're listening to the Marine Corps at 26. Yes, yes 26. You're like the old man in boot camp. It's so interesting. I, I was still, <laughs> I still look younger than everybody. You know, I'll be 47 yeah, yeah. in December, and uh, I just don't. But age. nobody's 20. Nobody's 26 in boot camp, though. Yes, I yeah, look yeah. back. It's true. Nobody yeah. was. Yeah. I was still a young man. I was 17. I'll tell you why. Yeah, I was still a young man. Until you're a Marine, yep. it changes everything. The level of the level of responsibility, the gravitas, the life and death. Who I was before the Marine Corps was who I was before the Marine Corps, but after, and they, and when they say this, they mean it. It changes forever. The Marine Corps makes men of 17 and 18 years. Like that. Gosh, damn! You meet a man in me, and it was hard. The pain, the suffering, and uh, the stone cold, absolute black and white thinking that you got to make the hard calls, and leaders have to make the hard calls. When you're 26 years old, you've got to really take down the the tough pill that you're listening to 
oh, yeah. drill instructors that are younger than you yes. that have ranking. How did you? I was blessed. Mine were older in those days in the late oh, really? 90s. Okay, they okay. were older than me, but they were so seasoned. Remember, in the yeah. old days, picking up rank took a long time. Yeah. That was never my issue. I'll tell you what my issue was. First of all, it was very hard. Yeah. My issue was that I was being shamed as a failure if I didn't simply clean the head with the squad yeah. and the platoon correctly. Yeah. Or that two sheets in a blanket almost made me <laughs> DOR. <laughs> two sheets in a blanket. Because you can't win. It's so like 45 but degree the, angles tucked but in. But that's yeah. the whole point. It's yeah. to teach process over product. And when that's what makes us Marines so great. And we're process oriented. And that's why uh, suicide mission after suicide mission, no problem. What was your decision to say, you know what, I'm not re-enlisting? I did re-enlist. I yeah, didn't right. and then, and then, but then again, yep. my third war in Fallujah and Ramadi, and truth be told, I've done about everything there is to do in war fighting, clandestine, overt, covert, Operation Trojan Horse. Uh, I look like I look now, then, and I was used as bait for. Uh, really? For, for, yes. So you 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 were you would be the. Yes, I was a bait. It, so I wear dish dash. Wow. I worked in the Chow Hall for. Uh, the spies that we knew were in the chow hall at Camp Fallujah to collect on me. And the taxi cab that would come pick me up, we had cut out the back seat. We, we, we set up armor in it. We had AWACS. We had cut off teams. And they were there to kidnap me and cut my head off. Because uh, asymmetric warfare, how you defeat a larger, more professional military crush their supply chains, create dissension amongst the third mm. uh, third nation uh, uh, workers. So I was the guy, that, the team leader, that was yeah. in charge of this. Really? And we turn the tables on them. And we smoke them close quarter. I mean, as close as you and I yeah. are at speed on right. the fucking highway. Gang, 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 gang. The machine gunner roll up the side. <gasps> and a little parasol like this. Their vehicle goes uh, tumbling. We got cutoff teams. We're on with SS uh, SSE, three minutes taking yeah. off phones, uh, uh, any kind of uh, information you could turn into intel and then ran signals intelligence on um, those devices and then did direct action raids. We destroyed the terrorist threat there in Fallujah and we shut down all IEDs. There you go, there you go. So after yeah. you're doing that, and I already led two invasions, overthrown two regimes, and there was other things to you, and I'll talk Get more some about baby. that later. Yes. Come on, man. I, I just thought, I didn't know what to do, and my wife yeah. wanted me to come home, yeah. and I think actually I had finally become tired, brother. Yeah. After seven years being at the tip of the spear, I finally had become tired. Gotcha. I think, I don't know. We didn't know how to process things back then. Because you were a contractor after the Marine Corps, right? Yes, first I was an MMA coach and boxing coach, and then Generation Kill, and book, and Generation Kill, and modeling, and then though it wasn't the same, and my brothers, other recon dudes, scout snipers, um, and other forces that were at the front, we started contracting. First state side running so, super. So you, so you wrote Generation Kill and then you contracted? Yes. Really? So you had that project already in your head? Well, it just, wow. I was searching, man. Wow. I was searching. And the entertainment business is, it can be very, very difficult. No, it's very, it is very difficult. Yeah. It's designed to keep good people out because once you get in, the money and the uh, influence you have is so profound. Yeah. So here we are outsiders. I'm not even from California, I'm from Missouri. I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, but now I'm making a lot of money for some organizations and some TV uh, channels and advertising. But I had no development. I had a very high-powered lawyer, excuse me, a very high-powered agent with high-powered lawyers at the William Warren, mm -hmm. Morris Agency, the biggest agency in the world at the time. And they just saw me as a, a local yokel, uh, a rube with some big dollar signs on my head. That they could make that big percentage. And then after I did a few television shows and did a book deal and everything, then it was nothing. Wow. And I'm used to working with a team. I'm used to working with a brotherhood. I stick with you. I couldn't believe it. The depression, yeah. the sadness. And then contracting exploded. Then I started doing counterterrorism in Africa. And uh, it all was part of the journey. Yeah. And then, uh, eventually I fell apart like a lot of us do and thank thank goodness i had those warrior ethos and a space of love from the beginning with my little brothers with uh chinese kung fu with martial arts and with recon that the love uh, uh helped me take that freaking gun out of my mouth the love uh, 
you had those moments? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, just like everybody, uh, just like most of us. Yes, absolutely, it was immense pain, immense pain, and I did not have the tools and didn't even know how to discuss. Now, this is why today, when you hear me talk, yep. why I'm so transparent and courageous with vulnerabilities because this is what opens people up and say, holy moly, Rudy, I went through that too. We can create discourse and we can talk and yep. we can develop strength with, uh, with fellowship. But we did not have that, as you know, in yeah. 05, 06, 08, yeah. uh, freaking 2014, it just started happening. Yeah. I went to the VA and I yeah. asked for help because I was having violence. I was fighting, I was pushing myself away from my loved ones. I started drinking hard and started doing hard drugs yeah. and I was deeply unhappy. I went to the VA. They tried to medicate me and tell me I didn't have a problem. There was nobody talking. Then. And that, and when I came back, and I made this comeback the last three years, and man, I'm freaking rocking. I said, that's never gonna happen again. Not on my watch, not on my legacy. I'm gonna open it up for everybody to understand mm. that what they're going through, they're not alone. Yeah. And even one of their leaders or one of their, their brothers they look up to, he's the first one to say yeah. that his heart was hurting and his mind didn't know what to do. Yeah. And he pushed every, everybody away from him. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now. And look, look what we're doing. Look how happy everybody is. We're moving forward. We're together. Yes. So you, you yourself had this low oh, even after the Marine Corps. For sure. Even even Hollywood. Well, I was such it. a work ethic oriented guy. I made it look good and I present so well. But even I ran out of gas finally about four years ago. Wow. Oh, I made it look good as best I could. But inside I was dying. Yeah. Inside I was dying. And uh, and we've seen some great men in our special operations community and, and veterans, period, men and women. It seemed to have it all yep. and then have a wife and child or a husband and children and still take their lives. Well, not anymore, not on my watch. We gotta do something about that. It's not post-traumatic stress. We gotta focus on post-traumatic growth. Get back to the ethos, the camaraderie, the blood, the love, the shared suffering and the shared laughter that we, uh, that we experience together. And understand that when you're reaching out, five more are gonna be reaching back to you. So it's PTGS. Yes. Post-traumatic growth syndrome. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. And we can all get involved with that. I love upward. that, man. That's more empowering. Obviously, keep in great shape. I physical fitness is, yeah. is premier for mental wellness. With physical fitness, wow. a cascade of chemicals naturally from the off gas of pushing yourself. This is the way we were created as beings. It fights depression, regulates endocrine system, digestion, immune system, and helps with sleep. And of course, when you look in the mirror, and you're proud of yourself, and you built it yep. yourself. It's real esteem. Yep. Yep, sir. It's not relationships. It's not monetary. It's not status. It's gonna start with you. It's you oh, yeah. right from here. So yes. Are they saying the Marine Corps? If you look good, you feel good. Damn straight. You look feel at, good. Look at me and you. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got to know. Uh, does Rudy, if you couldn't prepare your meals, what is? How do we eat better? How do you eat better? If you had to eat a meal quickly, what would you eat? In general, I eat less than most people. Most people in the first world just eat too, too much. much. I eat wow. less, I chew more. My Kung Fu teacher, Chun Man, says, Luti, in, in China, we do not have very much food. We're starving in Beijing. So when we do have food, we first talk about the food. We look at the food. We smell the food. We taste the food and we share the food. Next thing you know, half hour later, you're not even so hungry no more. <laughs> Brilliant. Get involved with paying attention. Pay attention. Work on your breathing, work on your posture. Be in tune and have passion and take everything you do personally, first to your own organism. Next thing you know, everything starts slowing down, the mind slows down. And start living in a state of grace. Uh, drink more water, eat less food. I eat a balanced. I eat a balanced diet. One quarter carbs, one quarter uh, protein, one quarter fiber, and some freaking Copenhagen now again. You know, <laughs> have course. a little bit of freaking uh, tequila too, but not too much. I sweat more. Be happy with your people. Uh, chew slower, and fucking move your body. You know, I never see you doing bench. I always see you with a kettlebell yes. and calisthenics. Am I it's right? It's true. Yeah. And I love my Sorenex. Those are my people, Bert Soren, all my people at Sorenex and Human Performance. Gunnar yeah. Peterson, come on. You, and I know you love your gear. You're the gear. If you can master your body weight, your gymnastics, your martial arts, you're in control. 
you can position, leverage, and angle your body weight in a myriad of ways to get some freaking results. Mm -hmm. Now, I did bring rings with me everywhere. I always carried my center mass bell, but when I was going overseas, especially in China, they would think it was a dang cannonball. It was a pain in the ass. It would take days, sometimes a week, to get it back. So now I have a sandbag, brute force sandbag. Yeah. Made Kevlar, indestructible. The liner's inside, you put sand in it. Yeah. It's a super heavy load. When you're done with your training, yeah. then you dump out the sand, roll it up like this big, put it in your bag, weighs nothing. And I take a big uh, rubber band, and I got those plastic sliders, bang. That's it? That's it, baby. Rock and roll, man. By the way, I, I, I always wanted to know, in that scene, Generation Kill. Which one was you guys gotta check mask? out. You guys gotta check out this gas mask and a flag jacket. Ultra. But everybody's looking at you because, you know, you, you, you bathing yourself. Right. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. She, hey, baby. <laughs> but what self care? Yes, but yeah. You know, self care, self love, is love for the team. It's love for the mission. Uh, if you don't care about yourself, how do you care about your team? If you don't care about your team, how yeah. the hell are you going to accomplish the mission? Yeah. But what coffee are we brewing? Oh man, I took it very seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so like a you serious... say it's a um, Italian model coffee maker which steams the espresso so you put the water in the bottom and then you put a ramekin of, of espresso grounds tamp it down and then you screw the top on and then you put it over fire now when you're working in primitive conditions you don't need electricity you can make a fire this is why it's uh, that's it's so robust i brought it with us oh my gosh you want to talk about force multiplier <laughs> you know oh my goodness gracious and add a little of that chocolate freaking uh, powder in there from the mre Oh, Holy course. moly, we just, ah, ah, felt so good when you're so depleted of sleep, so depleted of food, and you share yeah. one mochaccino, yeah. right? Oh, Canteen and it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's morale, baby. Outstanding. Well, very good. Uh, Rudy, it's such an honor to be here with you, Matt. Dude, my pleasure. Outstanding, brother. Thank my you so much. Pleasure. It's just the beginning. Same for right. freaking five, brother. You know it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Well, guys, to find more about Rudy Reyes, go check out his Instagram. And, guys, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to YouTube channel to find out more stories just like this war hero right here. Oh, thank you, brother. It's my honor. I love you all. Let's spiral up. We're together. It's not me. It's we. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.